Eddie agrees to help a psychiatrist restore a patient's memory. This could cause more harm than good. That's now on UK TV drama Daytime. And then look out for Casualty at noon. Doing our best not to, sir. But if I damage any of that water, Chris, they'll have to pay for it. Think we're wasting our time, Sarge. Are you satisfied? No, sir, I'm not satisfied. You've been over my house to the foundations, you've dug up the grounds, and now you're ruining these beds. Only doing as instructed, Mr. Mortimer. Come on, Buffer. Come on. Get out. Shoestring. I'm, I'm a witness. Oh, one moment, sir. You rejoin a V. Cuthbert. That's the one. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, just to wait over there, sir. We'll call you when you want it. Oh, I see. What are you doing here? I'm appearing for Her Majesty. What about you? I'm deviling in front of the circuit judge. Oh, really? I thought you didn't practice anymore. Only in the direst emergencies. And this is dire. Oh, well, Charles discovered that this hearing clashes with a pro-am golf tournament. He's obviously a very dedicated barrister. Erica, is anywhere around here you can get a drink or something? Well, if you're still here in half an hour, we'd go to the pub. I'll buy you a drink. Oh, OK. Good luck. You're on the wireless, aren't you? Radio West. Yeah. Does it show? Eddie Shoestringer. I've heard you. 
Why haven't you answered my letter? Your letter? I'm Miss Atwell. Miss Diana Atwell, Glebe Cottage, Gadfo. I wrote you Friday. Ah, well, I'm a bit behind with things at the moment, Miss Atwell. Was it something important? It was about him over there. Evil tempered group. Is he? Murdered his wife. Did he? Is that all he's here for? Oh, he's here for breaking young Derek Hawkins' jaw. Hope he gets put away. How do you know he murdered his wife? Oh, everyone in the village knows that. Trouble is, see, they can't find her poor broken body. Rejoin the Mortimer! Called David Mortimer. Hey, wait a minute. I thought we were top of the bill. <clears throat> oh, there's an adjournment, sir. Cuthbert sent a doctor's note. He's got a chest condition. Well, I wish he'd had it diagnosed earlier. I could have stayed in bed. Well, you'll be notified when the case is listed again, sir. All oh, right. I'm free to go, then, am I? Without a stain on your character. From the time my, my wife disappeared two months ago, uh, these people have made my life intolerable with their lies. They're, they're malicious. Gosta Mortimer, I'd be obliged if you'd keep to the point. Well, the point I'm trying to make sir is that i have been subjected to the most extreme provocation i mean when i saw what they'd done to my house well i'm i'm, I'm afraid i just lashed out do you have anything further you wish to add no david william mortimer i have listened to your statement with some sympathy Nonetheless, nobody is entitled to take the law into their own hands, no matter what the provocation. Fine 50 quid and bound over for a year. Oh, that's quite cheap for fracturing someone's jaw. Mr. Turner likes the middle classes. What were you doing hanging around his court hair? Well, my case was adjourned, so I went to check out this guy, Mortimer. Because apart from breaking a jaw, he's supposed to have murdered his wife. Mortimer? Is he the watercress farmer from Gadfold? I don't know. What do you know about him? Well, the local police report passed through my office. You know, the rumours about his wife were strong enough to warrant a search. Yeah, but as one of the villagers said, they can't find her poor broken body. You know, many people think the only sort of water they can get in their garden is out of a tap. Well, with a little effort, there is another way. <sighs> it's pretty thin stuff, Eddie. Yeah, I know. He states the obvious, doesn't he? I mean your case story for this week. We seem to have a summer slump. What do you mean? It's got human interest. It's about dogs and kennels. All right, it's got doggy interest then. Today, I want to tell you how to make a dew pond. You can have the clearest, brightest, best tasting water. Dew ponds can be easily constructed. Your private air spot must have strong human drama. I can't manufacture stories, Don. I have to take what comes. People out there have a thousand problems. Your clients at our expense. Well, if they've got problems, they're keeping them to themselves. Of course, there is the bloke in Sirencester who reckons that Martin Borman's working there as a traffic warden. Is that the sort of thing you want? What I want, Eddie, is dynamism. That's what makes a radio station tick over. Try harder. Mr. Sashley, you should be on your way to the country show lunch. Right. See ya. Terrific dynamism when it comes to free lunches, isn't it? Is there anything for me? Not much. A Mrs. Atwell phoned about a murder. She claims she's got some new evidence. Mr. Mortimer? What do you want? I just wondered if you could spare a moment. I'd like to have a quick word. I've seen your face before. You were at the court yesterday. Yeah, that's right. I heard your case, and I wondered if I could be of any assistance. What are you, then, a reporter? No, not at all. I work for the local radio station. Wonderful. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Well, perhaps you'd like to take yourself off this property before I lose my temper. Take it easy. You bust another jaw, and you'll end up in prison. My name is Shoestring. What? Yeah, I, uh, used to carry a card. I'm what you might call a private detective. Oh, are you? I suppose somebody's told you I murdered my wife. Yeah. But suppose I could prove that you didn't. Sorry about this. Place is like a pigsty. Don't worry, it's okay. Cheers. 
So your wife's been gone for two months? Yes, that's right. And I informed the police um, a few days later. And what did they do? Well, before they su suspected me, you mean? Uh, not a lot. No, apparently if a woman deserts her home and disappears after 12 years of marriage, that, uh, that's not an offence. It's not like riding a bike without a light. And you've no idea where she might have gone? Well, if I had, I'd fetch her back, wouldn't I? Is that what you do, then? Trace people? Occasionally. You think you can find her? Well, given a little time, it, it is possible. Have you... Have you considered that she might just have gone off with another man? No, I don't think that's unlikely. Yeah, you see, I was told that when she walked out on you, she didn't pack any clothes and she had no money, so presumably somebody must be helping her. She had money enough. She took cash from the farm account. How much? 80 quid. They didn't tell you that. No, you won't learn the truth. Nosing around this village, they, uh, they don't know anything. And what they don't know, they make up. They're a poisonous little lot. Miss Atwell, you said that you had some new evidence. Ah, Gladys Robinson told me yesterday that on the day Rosemary Mortimer disappeared, she had to give her a pound to pay for the milk. Diana! Get out of the confounded way! Oh, He always kept her desperate short. She wouldn't get far without money now, would she? Who's Gladys Robinson? Fine. Excuse me, Miss Atwell. Who's Gladys Robinson? Oh, she used to do the cleaning for Mrs. Mortimer. You want to have a word with her? Yeah, sure. Where do I find her? Oh, she'll be out round the village with her old pram delivering the morning paper. The morning paper? This time of day? You might have warned me, Gladys. The Colonel's dogs won't hurt you. They won't bark. Yeah, through great big teeth. Did he used to deliver to the Mortimers? Mm, he don't take a paper. Now, how long did you clean for Mrs. Mortimer? Going up there on and off ever since they first come to Gadpole. Must be about ten years. <laughs> Jim, why are you? Don't eat the pram. Why on and off? Well, I only go up there in the spring months when Rose was helping cut the crest. So you must have got to know pretty well, then. Was I did. Did the police question you? They wanted to know what clothes was missing from her wardrobe. As far as I could tell, only the things she stood up in. So you reckon she just ran off then? She never said a word to me. But I tell you, she was the tardiest woman I ever did know. I'm clean. Well, a woman like that wouldn't run off without so much as a face flan on there, would she? It's not very deep, is it? Is it like that all the way along? About three inches. She's not down there, you know. I didn't think she was. She had no reason to leave. Put home anything she wanted. There was no reason, except her time of life. I think got a bit strange. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. Had she ever threatened to leave before? No. Why should she? When I first came here and wanted to sink the wells, the whole village opposed it. Sit down. Yes, a petition as long as your arm. And since then, I've had uh, very little to do with the villagers of Gadfold. Well, why did you buy a farm and then change it? Well, because I knew nothing about livestock. But as a, as a geologist, I do know an artesian basin when I see one. I was nine years in Hong Kong, specialising in marine foundations. Hong Kong? Did you like the food? Hmm, yes, I'm quite uh, partial to Chinese food. Yeah, there's a great restaurant in the town here. It's run by a guy who calls himself Hong Kong Herbie. Have you ever been? No, no, I don't, don't think that Rosemary and I have ever dined there. Hmm. Who plays the piano? That's Rosemary's. She trained at the Royal College of Music. She was teaching out east when I met her. Hmm? 
Did she ever teach here? No, I told you, we don't talk to the villagers. Who was he, Mortimer? Close as a locked door, I bet. No, no, he seemed quite talkative. Well, of course. To hide a guilty conscience. What did he say about himself? Oh, this and that. What about her? He seemed very fond of his wife. Oh, his slave, more like. Don't you be fooled, Mr. Shoestring. I bet he said they was inseparable. More or less. He's a liar. She left him once before. What? Didn't tell you about the other time she went away from home then. When was that? First summer she was here, in June. She went off all of a sudden. Gone six months till Christmas before he found her and brought her back. No, you didn't think he'd killed her that time, though, did you? We didn't know him then, did we? <sighs> Gladys, you know when you lent her the money that day for the milk? How was she? Was she a normal self? Just worried in case she hadn't enough for the milk. It was in the morning, then? Oh, no, the afternoon when I delivered her a paper. I thought you said the Mortimers didn't take a paper. They don't. But that day she phoned and asked me special for a Western Daily Press. Oh. Thanks. Nice strawberries. <laughs> well, all right. So Mrs. Mortimer shoved off for a spell nine years ago. I left my husband at least twice. Yeah, but why didn't Mortimer tell me? Pride. You know, I've known men pretend their wives just went out shopping months after the breakup. Yeah, I suppose you must be proud. Thanks, Rowan. And he's got to be stubborn, because anybody else would have left that village ages ago. Take it you like David Mortimer. Yeah. Now, straight away, without getting cold, and only with chopsticks. Oh, come on, Irby, don't be ridiculous. I can't pick up anything with these. What is it? The finest abalone in the world, brought up from the deep by beautiful diving girls. When? Oh, I'm a rubber flipper. <laughs> no, really, it's very good, Herbie. I actually recommended your restaurant to someone the other day. David Mortimer, marine geologist in Hong Kong. Do you know him? Mortimer. With a beautiful young wife. I don't know, I've never met her. Name's Rosemary, though. Rosemary, of course. She taught piano to the tone-deaf offspring of wealthy Cantonese merchants. You would know, wouldn't you? Uh, well, she's left him. I sounds surprised. Why? Mortimer seems so much older. Probably wasn't looking back. But then, some men are born with a 50-year head, aren't they? Yeah. He was insanely jealous. When you have a pretty little girl like that in a place that's not exactly a room, keeping them at home is not the done thing. Rather like cheating at cards. No, now that I think of it. What, did she show cards? No, but there was a juicy little scandal about one of his subordinates, Jimmy Stevens. Very taken with our Mrs. M was Jimmy. Well, Mortimer took him out on a survey somewhere. Came back alone. You can imagine that chin wagging, my boy. What happened? The Land Rover went off the roadway. Mortimer threw himself clear, but the boy was killed. An accident, according to Mortimer. I would rather you didn't disturb that. Why didn't you come clean with me? 
About what? Well, I thought if I was going to help you, you were going to tell me everything. Well, what about? Jimmy Stevens. What do you know about Jimmy Stevens? Why are you bringing that up? Jimmy Stevens' death was an accident. And your wife, that was an accident, too. You go to hell. Well, if you're expecting her back, why are you burning her clothes? Because I couldn't face them around the place anymore. That is why. Can't you understand that? Can't you understand my feelings? <laughs> this is ridiculous. I mean, she could be in hospital somewhere with amnesia or something. And what happens if she comes back? If she comes back, she can have new clothes. We'll start afresh. Well, uh, have you burned all her stuff? Well, most of it. What, what, what do you mean? Well, I, I thought I was going to help you, right? Well, I'd like to look through some of her stuff. Well, you won't find anything there. The police didn't. I could try. Is this a recent picture? Yes, two years ago. Do you think I could borrow it? Yeah. Thanks. Now, yesterday, you told me your wife had never been away before. But I was told that she had, nine years ago. Ah, oh, that was different, completely different. In what way? Well, she'd gone to uh, visit her sister in Canada. I knew where she was. It's not possible. No, 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 I called her and uh, so did the police. She uh, hadn't heard from Rosemary. Oh. Is that... Is that the sister? Yeah, yeah. Not that I've ever met her. She's been out there some 15 or 16 years now. Thanks. Yeah, why would your wife have ordered a paper the day she disappeared? Well, I don't know. Why shouldn't she? I mean, what relevance does that have? <laughs> I don't know. Back number of the Western Daily Press, the day Rosemary Mortimer disappeared. Laurie knocks down pensioners' wall for ninth time. School wins Radio West trophy. We get into everything, don't we? Yeah, it's Don trying to prove that we're really local. What about houses? Accommodation to let, anyone? Yeah, but there's over two columns. If she ran away, she'd be looking for somewhere furnished. Hi, Eddie. You want something good, strong, human? I certainly am. The accommodation problem. Shoestring, you're called to Winnipeg. On this one? Winnipeg? Did you say Winnipeg? Yeah, Winnipeg. Hello? Hello, Mrs. McGrath? Yeah, my name is Shoestring. I'm calling from England about your sister. No, I, I haven't. I'm, I'm afraid we haven't found her yet. I just wondered if she'd been in touch with you. How long exactly? What did you say? You haven't seen your sister for 15 years? Yeah, but I was under the impression that she visited you in Canada. Well, about nine years ago? My husband told me. Yeah, yeah, I suppose he must be. OK, Mrs. McGrath, if we have any news, we'll, of course, let you know. All right. Yeah, bye-bye, thank you. Well, at least the line was clear all the way from... Winnipeg, yeah, I heard. Yeah, well, the world is shrinking, you know, Don. So are my program budgets. What was that all about? I don't know. This guy Mortimer just doesn't seem to be telling me the truth. I think I'd better go and see the doctor. Sounds as though he needs to. Oh, dear. I'm so sorry about that. Yeah, um, so much for the weather forecast. I I'm looking for uh, Dr. Wilson. Surgery closed an hour ago. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I could die of pneumonia. Is that why you wanted to see the doctor? Um, no, actually, I, I need some information. Uh, do you have any influence? Who are you? Well, my name's Eddie Shoestring. I work for Radio West. Your, uh, whatchamacallit, looks a bit, um... Big grim. I could get our gardening man, Bill Sage, to take a look at it. I listen to him regularly. He's hopeless. Yeah, I know. Poor guy. Yeah. Can't see anything anyway. Uh, look, is Dr. Wilson in, please? What sort of information do you want? Well, it's a special case about somebody that might have been treated here. You know we can't disclose information about patients. Before I pass away, do you think I could just talk to Dr. Wilson? I'm Dr. Wilson. Claire Wilson. I assume that Rosemary Mortimer is listed as a patient of yours. Mm-hmm. Did you know that she disappeared? 
Everyone in the village knows. There's a lot of wild speculation about what's happened to her. Yeah, well, her husband has asked me to try and find her. Has he? Yeah. He's very upset. Yes. I had a young patient in here some time ago with a broken jaw. Oh, so you don't really approve of him? I barely know the Mortimers. They're registered. But they seem to have been in good health. I've never personally treated either. Oh, well, that answers my question, then. Which was? Well, did you ever treat her? You know, I thought things might have been getting her down a bit. And people do tend to confide in their doctor. Sorry. Your jacket's about dry now. Oh, thank you. How about nine years ago? Because apparently, you see, she disappeared then as well. Nine years ago? I was a houseman then. That was my father's time. This was his practice then. Well, if you're his daughter, you could read his writing. <laughs> Do you know when exactly? June, according to Gladys Robinson. My father died in April of that year. We had a locum for four months. You understand, I can't promise to tell you anything. Ah, here we are. Yes, she did attend surgery then. A couple of scripts for Librium, but no details. I'm sorry I can't help you any further. Do you think the locum would remember if I could find it for her? I doubt it. I suppose you're going to tell me that the locum's gone back to Pakistan or Egypt or somewhere. Christopher Knightley hardly. He's a consultant surgeon and lecturer at our famous university. Is he? Oh, well, thanks very much. You've been a great help. Uh, sorry about the sudden downpour. Take a hot drink and turn on your electric blanket. So we're coming to the base of the appendix now. Snipping away, lifting carefully, and with the thin worm-like organ carefully clamped and tied, the intestine sealed, it can be severed. Not spoiling anybody's lunch, I hope. <laughs> now, let's consider the differential diagnosis. Salpingitis. What are the symptoms? Um, you. Uh, Salpingitis. Mm? Uh, pyrexia. Ah, so. Yes, what else? Uh, oh, we're not functioning too well today, are we? Salpingitis can mimic appendicitis almost completely. So the symptoms are those we've discussed. Lower abdominal pain, tenderness, the raised white count, and as our friend there struggled to recall, pyrexia. Many an abdomen has been opened for appendicitis only to reveal a salpingitis, which could have been cleared up quite easily with a course of antibiotics. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's all for today. Well, I'll tell you about a lecture. All right. I have another lecture. All right. Bye. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Dr. Knightley. Mister, I think. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. In medicine, the more ordinary, the more exalted. Well, what is it? I've got a bit of a problem. I rather think you have. Mental paralysis, perhaps. <laughs> Look, I don't really know how to put this. See, I, I'm what you might call a private detective. My name is Eddie Shoestring. I wondered if you could spare a couple of minutes. Just for a little chat. About what? Well, you were a locum in Gadfold some years ago. Good heavens. <laughs> My humble past. Well, you better be quick. Yeah. Well, am I right in thinking that you took over from Dr. Wilson after he died? Yes, I did. Uh, how can I help you? Oh, so you do remember. Oh, yes. Pretty little village. Sort of place you can hear yourself think. I just finished senior registrarship, waiting for a consultancy. Yeah, while you were there, you treated a lady called Mrs. Rosemary Mortimer. Do you happen to remember her? Well, not after nine years, I wouldn't. No, I do have a photograph of her. What is this? I assure you, it's very important. This is the lady. Yes. Yes, I do remember the face. Attractive woman. Mortimer, you say? Mm -hmm. Her husband was drilling wells or something. Bit of a tyrant, I believe. How did you know that? Oh, I think it was the general view. Gadfell's only a tiny place. Oh. Well, Mrs. Mortimer went missing just about the time that you were treating her. Oh, don't tell me you're looking into a nine-year-old disappearance. <laughs> no, no. She came back that time. Gone again now. Well, has she? Obviously, you've talked to the local GP, Claire Wilson. Yes, yes, I have. Tommy, go. 
All the same, she shouldn't have put you on to me. Why not? Because A, I can't remember anything about Mrs. Mortimer, and B, even if I could, like any doctor, I'm unable to discuss the affairs of patients. But this is a bit different. There's a whole village that claims David Mortimer murdered his wife. They're giving him hell. The police have searched his farm. Now, if I can find his wife... You can get him off the hook. Exactly. But I can't help you, Mr. Shoestring. Now, if you don't mind, I have another lecture to give. Oh, what, well, do you think it'll be as exciting as the last one? Without you in the audience, I rather doubt it. Peter got his dog back, but he was lucky. If you have a pet, look after it and make sure that it doesn't stray. Last month, over 150 dogs and cats disappeared in the Avon area alone. Now, before I leave you, I want to say a word to a lady called Rosemary. I won't give you a second name, but if you're listening, it's two months now since you left your husband, and he wants you back. I know you may have your own reasons for not wanting to go back, but you must know the upset that you've caused. So if you're listening to this, please, Rosemary, get in touch. It's Eddie Shoestring at Radio West. All I need to know is that you're safe and safe. Well, that's all for now. Good night. Dogs and humans. He's really got it. I don't believe it. Hey! Yeah! I'm going for a run. You want to come? Fresh air, birds are twittering. They're not twittering, they're coughing. Come on, this is a month of hard training. Mineral water, oh. raw vegetables. Your crazies never last a month. This one might have been doing it for a week already. Step aside. filthy in that lake. You have no idea who they were. Not a clue. They just told me to lay off Rosemary Mortimer and chuck me in. Well, what did they look like? I mean, were they young, old? Young, large, and pale blue tracksuits on, you know, the kind that kids wear, and they had a cross here. There's your clue. If I knew what it meant. You obviously indulged in the wrong kind of sport in your formative years. That's true. It's the University Rowing Club. We'll try another start. Right, Cox? Come forward for a start. Are you ready? Go! Darling, old Weatherall's arrived. Just give him something to drink, will you?
What are you doing here? Well, you've had a busy day, haven't you? Do you make a habit of gate-crashing parties? So you're on the towpath earlier. You were training your thugs. I don't think you and I have anything further to talk about, Mr. Shoestring. Oh, I think we do. Is that your wife? If you don't even once, I'll call the police. Go ahead. I'll just go and chat to her while you're doing it. I don't think she'd have a lot to talk about. I thought I'd ask her why you're trying to stop me finding Rosemary Mortimer. Does Radio West allow you to indulge in blackmail? I stoop to anything, but then I'm not a professional man. I don't have a reputation to protect. All right. This is in confidence. Of course. I, I, I did treat Rosemary when I was looking after Wilson's practice. She was a very attractive woman. And, and a very lonely one. Mortimer never allowed anyone near the farm. I tried to give her some help. You know, some comfort, some consolation. Almost before I knew what had happened, we were lovers. A tonic on the national health. Look, I'm trying to tell you the truth, and you can get out. Well, Rosemary became pregnant. Mortimer knew it couldn't be his. He's sterile. He wanted her to have an abortion. She refused. They quarreled. And she ran away to have the baby. Did he know you were the father? Oh, if he had, I'd have been struck off. And where is she now? I honestly don't know. And the baby? Mortimer had it adopted. She went back to him, and that was the end of it. Or so I thought. Who adopted it? Well, it was done through an adoption society. Yeah? Well, they're very secret about these things. Oh, but you could find out a man in your position. Oh, for God's sake, Shoestring, I couldn't take the risk. No, I don't suppose you could. And you ever wonder what happened to the child? I've got two daughters of my own. What did Rosemary have, boy or a girl? A girl. Mary, she called her. If you told me the truth from the start, we might have got this sorted out a lot quicker. Well, you certainly excel at digging up the dirt, but perhaps that's your real function. And why did you lie about the child? It's nine years ago. It's in the past. It has no bearing. The whole thing is over and done with. Rubbish it isn't. You know it isn't. And I should imagine you punished your wife every day for what she did until she just couldn't take it anymore. Well, you imagine quite a lot, don't you? How would you know what it's like? I think I can guess. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll try and find her and tell her that you want her back. But then the decision is hers. Are you telling me that you know where she is? No. But given a little time. Don, I'd like to make another appeal on the air. And once is enough. You can't keep asking her to ring you. Well, maybe she missed my broadcast first time round. And maybe she decided to ignore it. Well, how else can I trace her? I've been through all the accommodation ads. Nothing. How about situations vacant? She may have got this paper to find herself a job. Oh, come on. I can't go through all those. Oh, look at that picture of me. And they say the camera never lies. I'd have better in my passport. Nine years old Mary Clark. Nice kid. Nine years old. Her name's Mary. She plays piano. And her photo's in the paper Rosemary Mortimer ordered. Some connection, you think? Genetics. You mean she was born with a talent? It could be. Her mother used to be a piano teacher. Don, do we have this girl's address? Shouldn't think so. But we know her school. So you work for radio That's right. It's a private detective. I shouldn't think you've ever heard me. Well, no, not you. But we use radio and television in our teaching, like most schools, don't we, sister? Yes, Reverend Mother. And of course we know Radio West because of your music competition. Oh, that's why I'm here. What's a detective to do with music? Well, it's about one of your pupils who won the piano section, Mary Clark. Oh, Mary. We were all so proud of her success. <laughs> Does she have a natural talent? Oh, indeed. And such a delightful little girl. But what is it you want to know? Well, would I be right in thinking that she's an adopted child? You don't seriously expect me to commit the indiscretion of answering you, even if I had an answer. Well, go on, just between the three of us. Oh, and Mr. Shoestring, your fine nuns are far tougher than your usual assignments. Well, look, Reverend Mother, I can't go into details at the moment, but I'm trying to help a man who's in trouble. What is this man to do with Mary Clark? Well, that also would be an indiscretion. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to ask our parents. They live near here. It's a day school. Well, so you'll give me their address, then? I 
It's in the office. Oh, while we're at it, you don't happen to know this lady, do you? Her name's Rosemary Mortimer. Mrs. Granger, you mean? Granger? Yes. She joined us recently as music teacher. Thank you, Mary. That was excellent. I can see you've been keeping up your practicing. Off you go. Bye, Mary. Can I help you? Mrs. Mortimer? How did you find me? I was helped by Christopher Knightley. She looks a nice girl. <laughs> mm, she's lovely. And musical. I suppose she gets that from you. Oh, she's got far more promise than I had at that age. How did you find her? Well, I, I've known where she was for quite a while. But I never did anything about it. Because I tried to shut that part of my life out. And then one day I, I heard some children's music on the radio and there was a picture of Mary in the local paper. So after that I just had to see her. You told him where I was. Listen to me. Let me go. Rosemary, you must come home. They think that... They think that you're dead. They think that I've murdered you. They're right. You did. Slowly over the years. I'm sorry you felt that. I loved you. I still love you. Perhaps you do in your way. I don't know. There's no real love in you, David. If there were, you could never be so unforgiving. Oh, well, that's not true. I can't manage without you. Look, we, we can go somewhere else, away from the village. Somewhere else with you would be just a change of address. And now, time for another session with Radio West's very own private ear, the inimitable, the inestimable, the totally inevitable Eddie Shoestring. What have you got for us this evening, Eddie? Another shaggy dog story? Good evening. No, this isn't about dogs. This is about a woman who one day just disappeared from the home she'd lived in for ten years. Let's call her Barbara, just to protect her privacy. Well, she vanished without trace. And it was so sudden that some of her neighbors 
overreacted. The rumor spread that Barbara had been murdered by her husband. And eventually, the police got to hear of it. I found out that Jeffrey, and that's the name that I'm going to use for her husband, had lied to me about his wife's earlier disappearance nine years ago. She hadn't been to Canada. She'd been in a nursing home having a child. But it wasn't Jeffrey's child. Well, he forced her to have the baby adopted. It was a little girl. She went back to him that time, but this time she refuses, and Barbara is going to see her sister in Canada. And apparently she wants to set up home there. As for Geoffrey, I feel sorry for him. He's a proud man, and his pride just wouldn't allow him to forgive his wife. So now he's going to have to learn to live on his own. Well, I wish him luck. That's all for this week. Don't forget, if you have any problems, anything you think that I can help with, that is.